As if making pensions stretch to running a car wasn't hard enough, Rachel Reeves prepares to hit all motorists hard. Plus, spurred on by the rich, overpaid and gold-plated civil servants in the Treasury, it's rumoured again that the government is preparing to introduce pay per mile to replace the current vehicle excise licence. Welcome to Grey Matters. Hello and welcome to Grey Matters, the channel that promotes the fact that the older generation still matters and is relevant and which looks at issues that matter to the older generation. Well, we all know motorists have long been the favoured target of successive governments and once again they're in the firing line. Firstly at the pumps. Now we hear that Rachel Reeves is preparing to add another 10 pence a litre to the fuel duty. Or maybe they're trying to price non-electric vehicles off the road. Nothing would surprise me. Fuel duty is currently levied at a flat rate of 52.95 pence per litre. Let's call that 53 pence for both petrol and diesel. And VAT at 20% is then charged on both the fuel price and on the duty. Something to say about that in a moment. Currently, our local SO garage is charging 147 a litre for standard unleaded. And when you remove the fuel duty and the VAT, the actual price is just 70 pence a litre. But what really grinds my gears is that bit about the Treasury applying VAT to both the fuel price and the fuel duty. To me, that's hardly fair because it means we're paying tax on the tax and they get a double hit. Surely if they applied VAT to the base product price, as I believe they should, and then added the duty, it's, it's fairer. And the pump price at that garage will be around 137. And let's not forget that if Reeves does slap 10 pence a litre on the duty, because of VAT, we'll pay more than 10 pence. However, even electric vehicles won't escape their next dastardly plan because the next thing to look at is that it looks like paper mile is rearing its ugly head again. Now, the last time it had any real possibility of being enacted was in 2022 when the Cross-Party Commons Transport Select Committee uh, called on the then government to establish a body to develop the scheme by the end of that year. Well, evidently it didn't happen as nothing was introduced. Forcing drivers to pay per mile for using their cars has long been circulating in the rumour mill and with the government desperate to fill that infamous 22 billion black hole, it's probably inevitable that it should surface again. However, it's understood that it is now being discussed with a view to being introduced in the upcoming autumn budget. Adam Smith, a former Chief of Staff to ex-Chancellor Jeremy Hunt, revealed uh, in the Telegraph recently that the Treasury has been pushing for this kind of scheme for a while. The Treasury, you notice, not the government. Who was ruling the country, you have to ask. Cinch, the car retailer, says that the system would replace the current vehicle excise duty, meaning that drivers will instead pay tax based on their annual mileage. Now, OK, this actually sounds very fair. Under the current system uh, of road tax, you're paying the same for driving 100 miles a year as someone who drives 160,000. The vehicles that use the roads the most do the most damage, so surely it's fair to make them pay for it. Cinch says that the Transport Select Committee claims that motorists could expect to pay about the same as they currently do in car tax because the paper mile rates will reflect not only how much you travel but also how clean your car is. Lower polluting cars will get lower rates much as they do with the current tax system. But do we really believe it? I mean, the government could sell the idea on that basis and then once it's in, they'll set the level however they like and increase it whenever they want. And it's all well and good if the rate is set at a sensible level, but a think tank last year suggested charging drivers six 
pence a mile. Now for the average urban driver that would be around £444 a year. But if you live in a rural area where public transport options are limited and a car is pretty much essential, you could be looking at £600 a year. So many cars are currently sold at the moment on the basis that the road tax is only £30 a year or less. And suddenly owners of those cars could find themselves paying the same as the owner of a, as a big gas guzzling SUV. Owners of historic and classic cars are currently exempt, but they'd have to start paying too. So suddenly, as a system, it's not so fair, is it? And if you're in the road haulage business, then at six pence or more a mile, and I imagine it will be more, well, that's a whole other minefield, and that could affect the entire nation. If lorries are paying per mile, then road freight costs will increase, forcing inflation-busting rises on everything that's shipped on our roads. I mean, food, farm produce, medical supplies, electrical goods, imported goods, even people, as public transport costs will have to rise too. Now, if paper mile is going to truly equate to the road tax for your car, then maybe it doesn't matter too much. But if not, well, who's going to suffer the most? Those on minimum wage, those on low income benefits, pensioners and people living in rural areas. But for everyone on low incomes, including pensioners, there are so many demands on their limited resources to stay warm, to feed and clothe, to pay bills that can't be avoided, like community charge. How much thinner can they be expected to spread their money? Now, if you remember, I said that electric vehicle owners won't escape either. Well, of course, that's another driving force, I believe, behind this, and it is the rise of electric vehicles, because they don't generate income. So the Treasury, safe in its centrally heated ivory tower, has to find ways to do that, in the light of the government's aim to ban the sale of new petrol and diesel cars in just six years' time. And even if paper mile doesn't happen, there's no doubt that electric vehicles won't escape. You can be sure they will be taxed too in some way. I mean, already the London Mayor wants them to pay the ULES charge, yet in use they don't pollute. There was talk back in 2022 that this system would require thousands of roadside cameras logging out every mile and hyper-expensive new software to analyse journeys and administer the charges. So how about this for a simpler solution? Forget about the roadside infrastructure. The government could just interrogate the MOT database and take everyone's annual mileages from that. Those who don't yet need an MOT could simply upload their mileages for the first three years. Now, of course, you know, that idea involves trust, something that most governments are pretty much short of. And it could leave the system open to abuse. But if owners of new cars did submit false figures, it would all even out when their cars get their first MOTs. But even if some motorists are able to cheat the system, it's still got to be several billion pounds cheaper to set up and operate. Just my opinion. What's yours? Now then, there of course there are fears that with roadside cameras every few feet, the government could use them to track and trace your every move. Great for crime prevention, maybe, but it would also give a totalitarian-minded state the ability, maybe, to actually control our movements. I also think it's worrisome how paper mile would affect people's ordinary lives, too. Aidan Rushby, founder and CEO of the car finance company Camula, has said that the introduction of paper mile road tax could drive more motorists off the road which is probably what the government wants, to be honest. He says, It's clear that Brits are already struggling, and this will have serious implications, especially for those living in rural areas who rely on their cars for essential activities like work and education. Such a tax would risk pushing more people to the brink, making it even harder for them to maintain the mobility they need. It's crucial to avoid disproportionately impacting those who are the most vulnerable. Yeah, well said. But, you know, this 
paper mar could adversely affect just ordinary everyday living. I think we would all probably struggle to keep one car, let alone two. And it would certainly curtail everyone's uses of their cars. And whilst that might be good for the planet, it would cause daily problems. Now, those like us who live in rural or semi-rural areas with poor public transport links could find themselves becoming more isolated and in the long term they could suffer emotionally and socially and maybe mentally as well. Now, I find it incredible that this nation of ours that has for centuries been the most progressive, influential and inventive in the world and which is still one of the richest, has spent the last 20 years taking away older people's independence, comfort and standards of living. And the removal of the winter fuel payment probably being the cruelest and potentially most deadly thing any government has done. And as an aside to that, I mean, any new means testing for that payment must capture those on low incomes who miss the pension credit threshold. Now with any luck the government will bulk at bringing in pay per mile on top of the winter fuel payment debacle and putting illegal immigrants at the head of the queue for social housing in front of all those who have been on the list for months if not years. But if it is going to be brought in then this isn't the time to do it. There is enough bad feeling, anger and depression about at the moment. We don't need this piled on top. So let's hope for now that it stays a rumour and doesn't see the light of day for a little while yet. Thanks for joining us. Leave your amazing comments below. Like, share and subscribe. And until we see you next time on Grey Matters, it's bye for now.